Minister Farrakhan makes a point there. Does anybody want to address that? Is, is there this feeling that um, one Holocaust is greater than the other or lesser? Or, or I, I don't know of any uh, Jewish leader or organization who has tried to compare Holocausts or tried to uh, out-victim some other group. I think that's silly. I think it's setting up a straw man. Uh, and uh, as far just to respond to a couple of the points that Dr. Polani made, um, Minister Farrakhan is clearly extremely popular. He's made some very cogent points uh, regarding the uh, condition of uh, the black community in this country. Um, and uh, some argue that uh, he's instituted some very worthwhile programs. But the fact of the matter is, he's an anti-Semite. He's a bigot. And uh, there's no way around uh, that very basic reality. Anyway, yep. one thing that um, I just wanted to respond to, one of the wonderful things about having the privilege of interviewing him and supporting this dialogue between him and Dr. Newman is that we were able to ask in a context where he was not being demonized, um, what he thought about a whole host of issues that people who have all kinds of opinions about him never bother to ask us questions. And in response to the question of how he felt about anti-Semitism, he made it very clear that he categorically opposed anti-Semitism, that as a victim of um, hatred as a result of the color of his skin, um, it, it would be foolish to support the oppression of any grouping of people, that as a Muslim he had a responsibility religiously to be um, supportive of all people in this country. But what he said he also felt very concerned about, and this is what a lot of independent black leaders and people in the black community feel concerned about, is when fake and false accusations of anti-Semitism are used to shut down legitimate criticisms and dialogue relative to the state of Israel, and also of the role of the Jewish establishment, from saying to the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, last year that Minister Farrakhan sh cannot march in a march um, that's taking place in Washington, D.C. to bully in the NAACP, which I'm glad Reverend Chavis didn't give in to, um, and saying that he should not be included in a black summit. Yeah, well, where yeah, where do these a, people get off? Right, right, now that's, that's a good point. point should Minister that. Farrakhan be a litmus test for any other well, black leader? He won't be. Uh, no, he, uh, he won't be and he isn't. Well, people have attempted yeah, to do that. Reason. But if, if Minister Farrakhan in insists that he's not an anti-Semite and then turns around and uh, uh, utters the kind of drivel we've heard tonight in these, uh, in, in these cuts, uh, the, the guy's uh, a hypocrite or... Uh, or he doesn't really okay, think well, too much the kind of, of the kind of dialogue he had. Yes, yes, yes. There are Arab Semites and there are black Semites. Yeah, that's the other point. The Ethiopic <clears throat> language is a Semitic language. So that when you really say anti Semite, is he anti the Ethiopian community? Is he anti Arab? I think that here again, in the opinion of the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs, in my opinion personally, the relationships between the two communities should not be driven by who is willing to say that I will not have Louis Farrakhan in my church, I will not have Louis Farrakhan at my dinner table. The relationship cannot be driven by who accepts or who denies Louis Farrakhan. The State of Israel um, entered into negotiations with the Palestinians seeking to put an end to those hostilities. Much blood has been shed, and since those negotiations, blood continues to be shed, uh, unfortunately, on both sides. But yet, for the sake of peace, dialogue was a prerequisite. So for the sake of understanding, with relationship to the Jewish community, irrespective of the organization, you cannot get to that point without a means of dialogue. So that what our organization says is that there are many examples where organizations and African-American organizations have worked in concert on a variety of issues. And that our cannot get so bogged down in trying to define who Louis Farrakhan is and what he stands for. He does not control any army. He does not control any police force. He does not control any uh, scarce resources of the society. He cannot deny 
any of my Jewish brethren anything.